waters that surround Taiwan and its offshore islands abound in sea life. The more than 300 species of coral alone here represent nearly a third of the world's known species. More than 1,200 species of reef fish also make their home in Taiwan's coastal waters. Among these are several that have a head shaped like a horse, a tail as nimble as a primate's, eyes able to turn like a chameleon's, and a marsupialesque pouch to carry its young. Of course, we're talking about the seahorse. While anatomically, there is no question these intriguing creatures are fish, their tail fins have specialized, with pectoral and dorsal fins providing primary propulsion, much different from most fish. Seahorses are ostechthians, or bony fishes, with a pipe-shaped mouth covered by a flap, which helps keep in food that still holds notions of escape. Without teeth to chew, or a stomach, food is digested relatively poorly. Seahorse eyes move independently, which allow the search for food to continue while scanning the terrain for potential danger. Respiration is done through cheek cavities. With pectoral fins just beneath, used to balance and steer. Dorsal fins set atop the lower middle spine provide propulsion. Tightly packed bony plates cover a hardened tail, which the seahorse uses as an anchor while at rest. Small, sluggish and defenseless against its natural enemies, the seahorse relies on an ability to change colors and blend into its surroundings for protection. This expertise at camouflage once led scientists to record mistakenly some 120 species worldwide. This number has gradually been whittled down to a more reasonable 34. Those living in Taiwan waters include the spotted, long nose, spiny, long spine, and recently discovered pygmy seahorse. Spotted seahorses are the most prevalent in Taiwan's coastal seas, found alongside coastal reefs and lagoons. However, populations have fallen drastically in recent years. The pygmy seahorse is a rare and endangered species found off Taiwan's southernmost cape at Kanding. It 
It measures in at just two centimeters and blends almost perfectly into its coral habitat, even evolving camouflaging protrusions on its exoskeleton to mimic those that dot surrounding coral. There are two pygmy seahorses on this coral frond. Can you spot them? Although their habitat stretches across coastal East Asia, from Japan down to Malaysia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea, the pygmy seahorse's small numbers and uniqueness makes it a favorite with divers. The arrival of spring signals the start of mating season across the animal kingdom. In the midst of a vast ocean, how seahorses go about procreating is a question worth asking. The male performs a courtship dance with color changes and a darkened pouch meant to attract the attentions of a prospective mate. Once together, the couple move in close to one another and descend to the seafloor in a playful tussle. Then, wrapped tightly, they rise and fall together. This rhythmic motion opens the male's brood pouch. And then, closes it around the female's ovipositor. Eggs are deposited into the pouch where they are fertilized and the male commences his new role as surrogate mother. Yes, that's right. It is the male that shepherds eggs from conception to birth. Along with pipefishes, the seahorse is just one of two fish known to assign full nesting responsibilities to the male. Once fertilized, embryos mature in the brood pouch. In some 15 days, hatchlings prepare to emerge. In the run-up to birth, the father shows signs of prenatal contractions. And he presses hard to expel the hatchlings. They are mirror images of adult seahorses, only much smaller. Like humans, seahorses occasionally give birth to Siamese twins. Unable to separate, they are fated not to survive long. 
Young seahorses often make a welcome meal for others, even adult seahorses. Likelihood of survival to adulthood in the wild is below 2%. Most seahorses live in the waters beneath coastal mangrove forests and in marshlands, habitats highly vulnerable to man-made disturbance and destruction. Reaching adulthood, despite all the life's threatening challenges, is truly a remarkable achievement. Slow but graceful swimmers, seahorses are perennial favorites for the aquarium. In the roster of traditional Chinese medicinal ingredients, seahorses also rank exceptionally high, on a par with the all-important ginseng. All told, markets around the world handle some 24 million seahorses every year. The Hellenic god of the sea, Poseidon, toured his domain atop a seahorse. Dried seahorses have long been given in the West as commemorative gifts to symbolize strength and stamina. Although serving different purposes in different cultures, the result for the seahorse has been the same. Widespread harvesting and a struggle for continued survival. Depletion of populations worldwide led signatories of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species to list seahorses under Appendix 2 in 2004. The current agreement, geared to help populations recover, restricts the seahorse trade to adults of at least 10 centimeters in length. In an effort to address market demand while helping wild populations to recuperate, the Fisheries Research Institute's Marine Biology Research Center in Penghu County has been working actively on ways to increase seahorse reproductive success in captivity. The small organisms eaten by seahorses are cultivated at the center on waterborne algae. Food is carefully inspected by technicians for potentially harmful bacteria before seahorses are fed on the nutritious gruel. A seahorse hatchling gulps down a mouthful. Researchers carefully adjust seahorse menus to the differing needs of each stage of growth. Small mouths mean that newborns need small, easily swallowed particles. Larger particles are introduced as seahorses grow. Mature adults are ready to feed on their main food source, shrimp fry. Captive breeding of seahorses is done both to increase the rate of survival to adulthood, so essential to increasing wild populations, to establish a standardized breeding approach that can one day be applied in commercial seahorse breeding farms. Positive results would give Taiwan's globally competitive fisheries sector front-runner advantage in this segment and open up new opportunities for business.
The results obtained by the center have not disappointed. Survival rates for captive births now already exceed 90%. And fully grown seahorses can be ready for market in just six months. Many anticipate the farm-raised seahorse business offering significant growth and profit potential. Delivering large, successful births is critical to seahorse population health. However, seahorses do not travel long distances and spend much of their lives in one place. Protection and conservation of their habitats is essential. It is up to all of us to ensure the future of the seahorse. These enduring sprites of our great blue oceans. <laughs>